I'm going to show you how to record good quality audio quick and easy, whether you are indoors or outdoors for social media and YouTube. I spend two minutes maximum micing myself up. I don't have the patience to be putting the wire neatly with uh, paper clips or sticking it around the collar, around the back, and sticking around my body. None of that. And the same applies when you use a DJI Pocket 3 or similar Pocket cameras. But let me tell you something. If you want to record good quality audio consistently and reliably, you're going to have to invest some money, okay? There is no getting away from it. Now, let's go first with indoors. Essentially, there are three types of microphones that you can use. The first one is a dynamic microphone. These microphones are really good for rejecting a lot of the noise and just focusing on what's close to the actual microphone. So, for instance, this is the kind of microphone that you need to have close to your mouth and it is going to feature on your frame. There is no getting away because you need to be close to the microphone to get a good signal. This is a great microphone for, for instance, podcasts or voiceover where you're going to be talking to the microphone close to it and you don't want to hear much more of what's around it. If you're the kind of person that wants to have a clean frame, you can use either a shotgun or a condenser or hypercardioid microphone. You could spend a thousand dollars or two thousand or three thousand dollars on a microphone or $150. Because the recording quality of a $150 microphone compared to a $3,000 microphone, when you upload your videos to YouTube and most people are watching it on the smartphones or microphones on the computers or laptops, how much of you are will be able to tell, it's open to debate. Now, personally, I don't recommend that you spend anywhere near $3,000. I have a microphone that I'm using, an Audio-Technica microphone, and that is connected to a Tascam DR40X recorder via XLR and from there is going to the camera. By going through a recorder, you're going to get cleaner audio. You're going to be able to send a loud signal onto your camera, turn down the volume on your camera. And by doing that, you're going to get really good sound with a very low noise floor. The amps on a sound recorder are always going to be better than the amps that you get on a video camera. Now, this microphone works for me because I think it's a fantastic microphone for the value and it does the job and it does it really well. And later in the video, I'm going to show you how you can deal with sound, how you can do the post-production and how you can fix problems. So stay to the end because I'm going to give you solutions to pretty much any situation. You might think that a shotgun microphone is the best microphone possible. And obviously, if you have a really nice Sennheiser 416 or similar microphone, I'm not going to argue with that. That's a great microphone. But these microphones are designed to reject a lot of the high frequency from the sides and not so much the low frequency. And they are great for outdoors where there are no walls or anything that bounces the signal back into the microphone. But I feel that either hypercardioid or condenser microphones are definitely better priced solutions than expensive shotgun microphones for indoors use. When it comes to outdoors, this is when things get really interesting because you have many different options and I don't recommend that you invest a lot of money on onboard microphones. The thing about onboard microphones is that they pick up whatever it's in front of them. So that's great if you are a couple of feet away, a foot, maybe if you do some vlogging, they'll give you a really good quality. The problem is when you move away from the microphone, or for instance, if you happen to be turning around because you want to talk to someone, the volume is gone. The microphone cannot pick up the audio and obviously it's not recording it. So personally, I'm not a big fan of these microphones and I only use them for backup. I am a big fan of <laughs> wireless microphones because I think this is what you should consider when doing outdoors filming. I use these ones from Holyland, the Lark Max, and these are great because they give you amazing sound quality. You've got magnets that you can clip them onto your chest if you want. But the beauty of these things is that they can record internally onto the transmitter as well as sending the signal to record onto your camera or sound recorder. And obviously you can clip your microphone to you and then just record the audio like that. Personally, I don't like that. I like to have my microphones hidden. I don't like to have anything dangling off my clothing. I recommend that you stick the microphone to your clothing and not to your body, okay? Because when you attach a microphone to your body, you need to deal with sweat. And a lot of the times for solo content creators and people that are doing social media, 
you moving around, you lifting things, you may be on a bicycle, moving in between locations, you doing maybe crazy things and you're gonna be sweating. And whether you use moleskin or medical tape, if you have a little bit of body hair, your microphone is gonna fall off. And I always stick the microphone to the collar of my t-shirt or my jumper or anything that I wear. Now, the key here is that you need to have a t-shirt or a jumper or whatever it is with something that is of relatively good quality and is not giving way okay because otherwise the weight of the microphone is gonna make it look really funny obviously if you have several layers it's always gonna look more hidden than if you just have a t-shirt that potentially you're gonna see the wire but with this method you can literally attach the microphone in a matter of seconds and then wear it wherever you go you put the wire into your pocket and that's it any piece of clothing is going to be a lot drier and a much more suitable environment for any of these stickers to go on than the body itself. Now, for hiding the microphone onto the collar of the shirt, I use several accessories, and this very much depends on the type of lavalier microphone that you have, okay? Now, for instance, I have this one here that is a traditional, fairly cheap lavalier microphone. There's nothing spectacular about it, but I'm using a foamy. They come in these little shapes they're really soft and this kind of isolates the microphone and it keeps it inside so that you don't have that rustle it's not 100 percent guarantee that you're going to eliminate all the rustle but it works really well if you use any medical tape or any mold skin to attach this to the clothing the moment you tear it this is going to be torn apart and I personally don't like to waste my money. So what I do is I first insert the microphone into the foamy and then I wrap some medical tape around the foamy. And what that does is that you still get the benefit of the foamy, but it protects it from getting damaged. With a cheap lavalier microphone, it's okay if it's close to the mouth as I have it now, and you're not gonna notice a massive difference compared to a really expensive one, but you will start to notice a difference when you, for instance, turn sideways and continue talking and you're gonna notice a swing in the quality of the recording, especially if you look up because the range is not that big. And that's not the case with the more expensive ones because they have a bigger range. So even if you're talking and you talk sideways or even if you move it slightly up, the quality of the recording is still there and you're not gonna have these really annoying swings that you get with the cheaper options. I also have this voice technologies VT500 microphone, which is a fantastic microphone. It's a slightly different shape. It's sort of a flat shape. And this is great if you wanna hide it into your collar because it's fairly flat and it's very lightweight. And you can see the difference between this microphone and this other microphone. The, the difference in size is substantial. And a microphone like this is gonna give you very good quality. And all you need to do is put one of these O's with a circle in between so that it doesn't block the microphone opening and then the other one you put it under your shirt or your jumper whatever it is and then you make it right up to the collar and you stick it there and that's it or if you have uh, my sunken uh, cos 11 i use the foamies and i stick this to the foamy and then this to the clothing and it works really nice. If you attach the microphone to your body, you have a lot of clothing rustling and you might touch yourself. There is a lot more going on than if you stick it up here that is basically stuck to your neck and is not moving. There is a little bit of movement, but it's not that much. If you are in a professional environment with a sound crew and sound recorders and basically three or four or five people dealing with sound, and you might do one scene and that's it, which is what happens in films. But yeah, you can stick your microphone to a lot more places because you might choreograph the action of that particular shot and you know the movement that that actor or that actress is gonna be doing. And whether you can place the microphone here or there, you can sort of predict how much rustle there is gonna be. For social media, you cannot predict. So I recommend <laughs> you stick it to the neck and forget about it. People are a lot more forgiving about bad quality video than they are about bad quality sound. And in my opinion, lavalier microphones give you a lot more flexibility because an onboard microphone, yes, is gonna give you a really good quality, but let's say for instance that you want to go off and move because maybe you're doing a presentation or maybe you are talking to someone or maybe you're doing some kind of interview and then you want to move around. Well, a onboard microphone is not gonna do it. And let's say that you want to walk away at a distance. Well, the onboard microphone 
But a wireless microphone can, and you can record it either on the transmitter or directly onto the camera. That's not something that you're going to be able to do with an onboard microphone. So personally, for YouTube and social media content, I think a lavalier microphone is the best option and the onboard microphone is purely just for backup. And there are times where you will have to hide it elsewhere. It's not always going to be the color of the t-shirt or jumper the best place. So for instance, if one day you want to wear a scarf, well, that's something that is going to be between the mouth and the microphone and that's going to affect the quality of the recording. So you need to be creative. And for instance, if you wear a baseball cap, you can hide it there or in between the hair. Some people hide it in between the hair or somewhere in between the clothing so that there is not a lot of uh, rustle. And if you're a woman, you can hide it in the bra. But for most people, including women, just hide it in the collar or somewhere around the neck and it's going to be totally fine. When it comes to recording audio on a smartphone, things are different but very similar. So the concept and the principle are the same. It's just that the connections are different. I use these new wireless microphones from Hohem because they are absolute tiny. They fit on the phone and this thing has a very small footprint and you get these really nice magnetic microphones that you can, again, attach to yourself or use a lavalier microphone and get really nice sound recording. They even have built-in noise cancellation and you can also attach a TF card or mini micro SD card and record audio on the transmitter itself. And on top of that, if you want to record sound while you are on a gimbal, this adapter or this receiver is great because it's so small and you're not going to have the phone sticking out too much. If you're using a gimbal and you don't want to be fluffing about with a wireless microphone and you want to be really quick, you can just record the audio onto the actual transmitter. Or if you have a small recorder like a Zoom H1N, you can use that. And then you can then bring your footage into your edit suite and then sync it by the waveform. It's really quick and easy, it takes no time. And that basically means that you don't have to be attaching a microphone and dealing with the gimbal, the clearance, and depending on the accessories, whether the phone is too heavy and then you need to mount it upside down. I recommend that people invest in DaVinci Resolve Studio because if there is one thing that DaVinci Resolve Studio gives you that justify the price that you pay in itself, is the voice isolation plugin that you get in Fairlight. When you are a solo content creator, you want to get on, you know, you don't have 10 minutes to be waiting for the plane to go. And then depending on the flight path, you might only have two minutes before another plane comes on. You want to be doing your talking heads quick and fast. And this plugin in DaVinci Resolve is almost a miracle. We come to Fairlight and all you need to do is select voice isolation, which is this plugin that I mentioned to you. Listen to this. This is without. Don't just rush and buy the latest equipment because you and this is with. Because you've seen some YouTube videos and that. So that in itself sounds a lot better. And you can then use the EQ to fine tune your voice. Now DaVinci Resolve has some basic presets and you can just choose something like this. If you can just play around with it and then do one that you like. And obviously this is entirely up to you how much voice isolation you might want. I mean, you might be entirely happy with just uh, 25%. You need to understand one thing. This is taking away a little bit of the voice crispiness and sharpness. So that's something that you need to decide based on whether you have any issues or whether you need to deal with a lot of background noise or not. But that usually around anywhere between 25 and 50 would probably be the maximum. The next one is a, in a studio where there is a little bit of echo. Doesn't really matter. Shoot with whatever so you... So you can clearly see that there is a lot of echo here. I have on global presets three different studios depending on the microphone that I used and the environment and the type of lights that I have. I just switch between one and the other. So in this instance, I have a preset where I have 51% uh, uh, voice isolation. I have a graphic equalizer with these uh, settings. And then I use a plugin called Crumple Pop to remove the echo. So if I turn those off, you can clearly see that there is a lot of echo in the room. Doesn't really matter. Shoot with whatever it is that you have. If but if I turn them on, it doesn't really matter. Shoot with whatever it is that you have. If you can clearly see that the, there is a big difference in quality. This is a plugin that you need to pay for and in my opinion is really worth it. Now the final one is an outdoors where there is clothing rustle. So focus 
that we fail to take a wide angle lens and see the bigger pictures. And the reason for this is because I have the microphone here, as you can clearly see, and I did this on purpose. So I had a scarf that was in between my mouth and the microphone, and the microphone wasn't really very well put and hidden. All I did in this instance was uh, 99 percent of the voice isolation you know that's very extreme but then i also use the echo remover at around you know 50 percent and on top of that i use the noise reduction on auto nothing else <laughs> it has created a really good effect so focused that we fail to take a wide angle lens and see the bigger picture and it's not perfect but it's definitely usable and when i did this video once i lay the music not a single person complained that's so focused that we fail to take a wide angle lens and see the bigger pictures and i hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you did smash that like button or even better subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and i will see you in the next one